Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Film Faction podcast with uh, myself, Josiah, and my co-hosts, OJ. Hello. Uh, and Lance. Boy, mate. And last, but most certainly not least, Evan. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, seeing as this is the first episode... I'm just going to start us all off with a quick rundown of the thesis of this podcast to let people know what we're all about, uh, why we decided to start this podcast, and what you guys can expect in the future. Uh, so let me start with a quick summary of how the podcast works and what content we'll be churning out for you guys. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, for this week and the coming weeks, all of us have picked five films we want to discuss for one reason or another uh, for a total of 20 films. I put those films into a spinning wheel of films, and whatever land, whatever it lands on is our topic for the next podcast. Uh, whoever suggested the film is kind of the go-getter for the conversation at the next session. Uh, they'll be the ones supplying the first questions and discussion points. I'm sure all of us mm -hmm. will have lists of things we want to talk about as well, so you're sure to hear from all of us on one topic or another, I imagine. Um, as far as these discussions go, there's not much method to our madness. Uh, really, what Film Faction is, is just a bunch of friends who really love the medium of film and what it brings to the table in our society. Uh, all of us come from different backgrounds with different bases of knowledge, so there's sure to be a lot of diverse viewpoints in this group. Uh, so, all of that technical junk out of the way, I think it's time that we begin discussing our film of the week. Uh, guys, what do you think? I agreed. Yes. I'm excited. Let's go. Do this. Cool. So... Uh, this week's film is Alfred Hitchcock's 1960 film, Psycho, an absolute fucking classic. Um, so let's hear everyone's opinions on it. We'll just go around uh, and we'll start with OJ because this is your film. So you get to go first. All right. Um, I mean, safe to assume we all like this movie. I like it a lot. I agree. But oh, yeah, I liked it. I mean, with most films. There's a lot of things that I didn't like about it. Really? What What did you not I mean, like about it? I'm interested to hear that. <laughs> so, there's just a few scenes that... Just, yeah. Like, just... the scene when... After he murders her in the shower, mm -hmm. the cleanup scene was very long. Extremely long. It kind of was, huh? And I got very, I mean, it's just boring to watch. Uh, just certain scenes take a long time. I um, I think it, yeah. I mean, my opinion, I I liked it a lot. I mean, it, it's the origin of Bates Motel, right? Like it's oh yeah, the the birth ground of how many TV shows and films that have come out. Um, as far as the as the scenes go. I can't think of one that really like was was bad. There is one scene that steps out to me that was just fucking <laughs> ridiculous. Um and it's when the the dude, the private investigator goes into the house and gets shanked. Um, yeah, and he falls down. And he, the, the way he yeah. falls down the it stairs. <laughs> it's just so stupid, but it is 1960. I know, it was it was yeah, a 1960s film. But, like, it, it just made me fucking lose my shit. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> it was so ridiculous. It was and he, he like, just, it brought some comic he just glided down the stairs, dude. Like, he didn't even yeah. fall. Like, you could he even see his, his feet. Through all 20 stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After he took, like, a kitchen knife to the thorax. <laughs> Got the Anakin Skywalker scar on his face. But I mean, I besides think... that stuff, yeah. I like it a lot. It's iconic. Oh, it absolutely is iconic. Like it is beyond a doubt the birth of 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 what I would consider to be um, modern thrillers and 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 slasher yeah. films. Oh yeah. yeah, it's had so many imitations of it. Oh, an insane well. amount. It's insane. I actually have talking points on that, but I'll wait uh, for those till later. Actually, I think uh, I think personally it. I think this movie holds up against time. I really think it does. And I, I think it does that because it's one of the few movies that really goes through the motion of you think you're going to get this person as your main character. You think the whole ride it's going to be them. But really it switches. 
you get attached to this person and then a tragedy strikes yeah. and you switch to another main character and the other main character you eat like i i really like the main the main girl as as the as the first character you introduced to i really um, liked her. what was her name lee something marion yeah no no to no, the I actress the actress oh the actress i'm not sure. and and lee i think I believe, I believe you so. are correct. Let me I just see. Up, yeah. um, Janet Lee. Janet Lee. Janet Lee. Yeah. Okay. She, I think she was a good actor, but I think you, you could tell that her character was kind of, it, it was kind of tough. She was a kind of tough character, so it was hard to get really in depth with her. Um, but when it switched to Anthony Perkins' character, Norman Bates. Um, I feel like you fall in love with this character, even though you mm -hmm. know something's up. He, this character is just, it's not even because he's like, he's not dynamic or anything, which kind of attracts people sometimes. It's just, you really like how weird he is, how, how, well, kind of how shy he is, maybe even some people would like. Almost um, innocent. I, yeah, or innocent he is, 100%. I just think that this is one of the rare movies where a main character switch is performed well and um even though like like matthew said um it does have some scenes that are you know drawn out um but some it's usually not for nothing that they're drawn out sometimes when when it's drawn out scene they talk about clues you know leading up to revealing what really happened to to uh to mrs crane um, yeah so i think i think it's very good i i like this movie a lot so, I do so, agree that it holds up. So branching off of what you said about the main character switch, that's actually one of my discussion points uh, <laughs> for today's session. Um, because before Psycho, I I can't really like recall a film or a story even that switched main characters halfway through. Well, it, like, it was like yeah. a, it was super jarring, like moving from Marion to Norman as the mm -hmm. as the focal point of the film and some people argue that like even after after her death marion actually still was the star of the show like she was passively the main character which is interesting because in the book that alfred hitchcock based this off of um the book norman was the main character the whole time right. and marion I mean, marion showed up in this movie like huh. Marion just showed up in the book, and and you just followed through. But in this, they they made the conscious choice to to narratively change that, and and put you in Marion's shoes. And I think they did that on purpose. Um, just so to, it's much more of a shock when she gets yeah married. to to unsettle you, which is which is something that all of Alfred Hitchcock's work has in it. Like he's out to to jar you, and it upset you. Yeah. I yeah. I just thought that was interesting, and I I wonder like like do you think if a film was made today that that did that could they get away with it like changing characters without warning like like psycho did i feel like a large part of why they did that successfully is because no one did it before yeah i, mean, I, I, I think it's done certain before. movies yeah yeah i think they that could but it. i think there's only some production companies that can do it correctly i don't think like Pulp like fiction. A24. Yeah, like Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction Tarantino. does it very well. Yeah. Tarantino pulled that off great. He knows how to do it. Um, I could see an A24 film doing it because their, you know, their producers and their directors are very outgoing. Uh, they test the waters of modern movies. And they, so nice. I could see maybe that coming in the future um, with future mm -hmm. films. But I don't think anyone can do it right. Like any modern producer that's you know kind of like a regular label now in in the film industry can do it correctly and get away with it in such a way that it will keep you invested like alfred hitchcock did i think that your example of, of pulp fiction is is like perfect and i think part of that is because quentin tarantino the way he shoots his films is very old-fashioned like like the way he does the editing and the cuts they're yeah, all very reminiscent of older films all of his movies yeah. Yeah. Um Okay, so so branching off of that, do you think there's like similar narrative beats uh 
that that could be more effective than just doing a main character swap that would achieve the same effect that are possible now that wasn't possible back in the 1960s. Mm. Psychological, uh, like uh, instead of doing the main character swap, if they pulled, um, like like we recently, uh, I recently just watched, and me and Matthew did uh, Shutter Island, and in that movie there is a huge psychological twist in it that you you really don't catch on, but it's hinted in the movie, um, and we'll talk about that if we get to that movie and when we get to that movie. But th- there was a very very big psychological twist. And I think if if this movie pulled something like that, that big of one where it was it hits it, you know, in Shutter Island, the psychological twist in that just hits you in the gut. It it, just, it makes you really take in the movie. It makes you appreciate the movie. So I think if they did something like that instead of the main character switch, I think they could have I think they could have got away with um, probably the same amount of grace that the movie got. I think. Do you think that? that psychological twist would be used better if Norman was the main character of the entire movie instead of Marion? Because I know exactly what twist you're talking about. Right, right, exactly. Um, It could. Maybe. I I think it would have to be. I think think it would have to be Norman. You can't do it as anyone else. I, I agree that I, I I'd say having her as the main character and having it switch like that is much more complex when it comes to like psychologically messing with someone's yeah right because like, I wouldn't well, feel as like shocked if it was Norman the whole time the main I, I suppose so I wouldn't feel as attached <clears throat> to this character because when when she gets to talk to him and we kind of get to see. His like innocent like self and like kind of get to see how he works and stuff. But you also see his like psyche break, like the parlor scene. Yeah. Like where he just like, like virtually right. loses his mind. Yeah. Right. Like mid discussion. Yeah. I I don't know. I I I'm I'm still on the fence about whether them doing a different method would have worked as well. I don't think it would have. It wouldn't be as iconic. I don't. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be as I don't iconic. Think it would have but... so much. I because think it was like the been... first of its kind. Right. It was the first time someone had done that on film. Yeah, killing the heroine in the middle of the movie, <laughs> or like the main character in the middle of the movie. It's yeah. insane. It was yeah. Really the first. But I had I had some good points on that about. Have you heard of the Hayes Code? No. Hayes Code. I have not. It's like no. kind of like the restrictions that they got. During the '60s on movies. Oh right, yes, I ha- it's the ratings. That's how they used to do yeah. ratings back then. Yeah, and I have. This is one of the that. films that went against that um, code, like for many different um, scenes. Yeah, I, I was. Like, they were on shocked. the line of that. It was insane. I, I was shocked at at um, actually one of my discussion points is is like the the almost scandalous modern values that that are portrayed yeah. throughout the film. Like, a film in the 1960s, not just showing a couple in the same bed in the very first scene. She's also mm-hmm. half naked. They aren't married. Yeah. And and they're, like, actively fondling each other. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah. in today's standards, exactly. that's literally PG content. But for mm-hmm. the 1960s, yeah, that is insane. almost essentially porn. And And they got away with it. And not only did they get away with it, they succeeded. Oh, yeah. exponentially which is crazy yeah. to me one of the funny things is uh one of the i think one of them they couldn't show the woman's feet or something and that's what he did like when she was in the bed they were like showing her feet and i guess that was one of the codes like you can't show a woman's <laughs> yo tarantino would have hated the 60s dude oh, oh yeah. god he went against that <laughs> so, maybe that's why <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why know. he shoots shoots old fashioned so he can defy history. He's <laughs> like, fuck your haze code. The battery really likes feet. I mean, we all know he loves feet. Everyone, <laughs> everyone knows, yeah, everyone it, knows Tarantino it, it, loves feet. Everyone knows. It, yeah, I'm looking at the haze code right now because I wanted to look over um, 
what their yeah. what their guidelines were back then, and one of them is overt portrayals and references to sexual behavior could not be shown. Yeah, that's one of them. Or nakedness was forbidden. Um, yeah, complete nudity was never permitted on screen. W- no lustful it's, or suggestive kissing. Mm, wow, and this was going to be another one of my points uh, in that small point of of the Hayes Code thing. I'm literally not even lying. This you, I can send this article. It's from menshealth.com. It's an article about the Hayes Code, and it literally says interracial relationships were yeah. not allowed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, I had that this, one too. But this shows. Uh, back then, this Hayes Code was made by you know not to say that they're oh well back then they were well in the sixties yeah but, yeah oh, absolutely very really conservative bad. very very conservative really um and ex- just extremely racist um so oh, the God, Hayes Code yeah. was actually really morally wrong in many yeah. ways it was it was too. Um, I, I watched a video on this the other day of YouTube about the Hayes Code, and it, it said um, the guy who made this, uh, so I, for, I think it's Edward Hayes is his name. He made this to protect, you know, the the God birthed children of America. You know, the white yeah, the children God of America. God birthed children. Jeez. Wow. That's that's what he said. No, that is what he said. He that's said, insane. I didn't know that. It's, that's yeah, crazy. It's to, he said it's to protect the God birthed white children of America. That's why oh. he built the Hayes Code. Oh. He said that. Yeah. Jeez. Yikes. He, yeah. It, it it was bad. It was oh, really Jesus. bad. He was not a good person. It was very this code was very strict and very, very not morally right in yeah, well, any fashion. Alfred Hitchcock just gave him the fat middle finger. So yeah. he didn't give a yeah. shit. He very clearly didn't give a shit. Like the oh, um what one of one of my discussion points was like <clears throat> the obvious like psychosexual nature uh, of norman bates like i don't know if you guys put that together but like he like the fact that he he stabbed her when she was naked in the shower um Mm. the fact that like he peeped on her through the whole like his weird connection and obsessive connection with his mother like yeah he very clearly had some deep like psychosexual issues um and i that that actually um ties into what i was saying earlier about this being like the birth of modern slasher films like you you see that like in other films Mm -hmm. too like like often people like women in the in movies like friday the 13th and and halloween and stuff especially like they're attacked when they're naked or almost nude like similar and, and norman bates's connection with his mom is super similar to jason from from Friday the True. 13th and stuff like you see very clearly similar beats but, like in the acts of all these films it's crazy like i i just did some research earlier today just like going over it and it's like like uh some like reflective narrative beats that most slasher films share like how many scenes have a beautiful one die in the shower i already mentioned that like how many films have frustratingly incompetent police like how many how many films have a place that's out of the way of normal civilization filled with disturbed or violent locals that live there like like how like how many slasher films like when a character goes into a dark basement and you're just like are you fucking kidding me like why are you going in there like it, it all all of those things come from this film like yeah, it, right. it it birthed these tropes into existence which i think is nuts because it's, it's it really is a b film <laughs> like if, if you read about like the budget and stuff it is a b film right because he he funded I this himself it, yeah, he, had it, to. he did he it's it's a fact he literally put all of his money into this his own money it, it was all of his i think that's um, because of the Hayes code he like most most productions would go in with, with yeah. that probably mm-hmm. would because, yeah. yeah so and, and Continue, continue. Uh, oh, okay, oh, sorry. Um, but I was gonna say to to just add on to your comment, just of how of how this birthed everything else. I I think it does so good because um, Hitchcock looked to Ed Gein. Um, if anyone doesn't know who Ed Gein is, uh, he what Gein was initially the serial found killer, right? unfit, right, to to stand trial for mental health, but he killed around what was it, fifteen. 
15 women. Um, his target was mainly women, but he was he was a man in I believe Utah or Omaha or Utah, I believe. Um, I'll have to correct myself on that, but he did kill um, a lot of women and kept their skins and kept their bodies around his house, um, and even his yeah. some of his mother's body parts around his house. And when the police raided his house, uh, they found all these, and he would you know he had bowls made of scalps, you know stuff like that. Um, and Hitchcock did look to this story because this break in the uh, like early to late '60s um, is when they when they found all this stuff in his mm-hmm. house. And and it, mm-hmm. it is noted that Hitchcock looked to him for the keeping the mother in his in his home, even though she is deceased, um, and and dressing up as his mother because Ed Gein was found to have to be a cross dresser um, and act like his mother. Um, in his wow. own home. Well, actually, yeah. um, Alfred Hitch- Hitchcock. He, you're right. He did. He did fashion Norman Bates off of Ed Gein, but he right. he got Ed Gein from Robert Bloch's um, novel that he wrote, um, uh, which which was I, I think it literally is just called Psycho, like because the film is an adaptation of a book, <laughs> right. um, yeah. which I which I mentioned I earlier. That. Um, I have a snippet of information here if you guys are interested about hearing about it, about like the creation of the film. Yeah. I'm down to listen. <laughs> cool. So um, Alfred Hitchcock had just enjoyed a decade of tremendous success when he decided to make a movie about a nice young man with Oedipal issues. Hitch's output in the 1950s included Strangers on a Train, Rear Window, To Catch a Thief, The Man Who Knew Too Much, a classic, uh, and Vertigo. Yeah. Um, not right. to mention the very classic. popular TV series Alfred Hitchcock presents North by Northwest, another classic. Mm. Ooh. Yes. Um, another critical and popular success uh, was in theaters. In the la- later half of 1959, Hitchcock stumbled upon Psycho, Robert Bloch's uh, newly released novel based very loosely on the real life serial killer Ed Gein was the subject of a positive review uh, spotted by one of Hitchcock's assistants, who brought the book to Hitch's attention. The director still had one film left in his contract with Paramount, but the studio wanted nothing to do with the grisly novel or Hitchcock's adaptation of it. Even when he said he could make it cheap, Paramount was uninterested. Undaunted, Hitchcock bought the rights to the book himself for $9,000 and made Paramount his uh, this offer. He'd shoot the movie somewhere else with his own money, and all Paramount would have to do is distribute it. Plus, he'd defer his upfront director's fee and take 60% of the film's profits instead. Um, Paramount executives couldn't believe their good fortune at getting a new Hitchcock film, mm, film almost for free. Hitchcock was intrigued by the low-budget B-movies to which Psycho, with its murder and depravity, bore a superficial resemblance. What if somebody good were to make a movie like that? In keeping with the spirit of the genre, he confined himself to a budget of less than a million dollars and shot the picture in black and white. Um, it's true that he also wanted to avoid the the distastefulness of filling the screen with like full-color blood. Um, yeah. And they actually, yeah. uh, fun fact, use chocolate syrup instead um, <laughs> to save money <laughs> and as a matter of convenience. Uh, Hitchcock shot the film at the Universal Studios lot where his TV show was produced and used much of the same technical crew. So, uh, if anything, he's very financially savvy. 100%. Hmm. Agreed. That's amazing. I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. Yeah. yeah. Paramount was like, fuck you, and then he dropped an absolute banger. <laughs> then he was like, fuck you too. <laughs> now take right. my movie. Speaking of which, question. Oh, oh, go. Go first. Alright, so. Like, I sometimes have this problem watching classic movies, old movies. Mm-hmm. Like, did you guys feel, like, obligated to like it more since it is such an iconic movie? I actually A went into bit. it expecting not to like it. Really? Yes, because I don't typically enjoy older films. Like it's it's pretty rare for me to be super into an older film. Mm-hmm. But I was pretty into into Psycho like from the start. Um, yeah, and I think part of that was the like I said the modern way that they 
they portrayed the story. Like it was it 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 took me by surprise like how modern it was. Like literally from the start. Even the way that people talk to each other and like the way that the editing was done. Um and some of the scenes. Like it, I was just like I, I was kind of like astonished <laughs> watching it. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? This was made in the nineteen sixties. So I do not feel obligated watching older films to like them. Uh, to answer your question. Evan, what about you? I I'd say I, I had to lower my standards a little bit, but that's usually what I have to do for older films. But I tend yeah. I tend to enjoy them usually cuz I I grew up watching like older television with my family and stuff, so I I I tend to enjoy them quite easily. Yeah, it, I'm the same. I like a lot of old movies. Did take me like it it shocked me how well it was like i thought it was just gonna be really cheesy in some parts yeah like the lines and like how they talk but no it was like like josiah said it was very modern how they portrayed their characters and just how they sh- how he shot it it was just it, it's crazy to it's crazy to watch movies now and then look back on movies that like you haven't seen and just see those tropes being played out in those older movies it's yeah, oh, it's crazy. Lance, what about you? I think I did a little bit. Um, I did give it some leeway at the beginning uh, because it is so iconic. But I think uh, towards the beginning of the movie, while watching it, I had this more of this sort of like realization of I don't really need to give it leeway because it's like already just genuinely an okay to good movie like it's not a bad movie i don't so i i got that that i need to give it some leeway i need to give it time to breathe to get good out of my mind kind of quickly in the movie for me okay hmm that's just me though so so branching off of that do you guys have a favorite shot in the film I mean, taking away the iconic shower scene. Um, well, I I don't mean a scene. I mean, obviously, like, come on. Yeah. Like, like uh, my favorite the shot. Scene. Just yeah, like a it, cinematic shot. Yeah, like right a, like a well framed shot. Right at the end on his face when it's completely zoomed yeah. in. Him that's, smiling. That's yeah. Pretty good. Completely agree. Wow. Yeah. Really? That's my favorite. I, I, that's I, not I, my favorite scene. That's not my favorite that's, shot. That's not my favorite. Mine's probably. Squeaky smile. It's right before the scene you guys didn't really enjoy the the stabbing of the um agent or whatever, but it's like right yeah. before where it's up top, like looking down almost on top of him, oh yeah, the top oh, no, down really yeah. how they showed him coming out and just coming at him almost it just like it kind of messed with me, but I liked it a lot, just how they had it on his face at first, and then it showed him coming out from the door and I don't know. It was really interesting. Almost like an isometric type of view. Yeah. Which shocked me for how it just switched and came back. For a shot in the nineteen sixties too, like Yeah. I know. That's a pretty good shot to get. Um But that that's my favorite. But... My favorite shot is not a shot that I would say I liked in motion, but in terms of like a still shot. Like if I paused the movie and just looked at the shot, um, it's mm-hmm. it's when he first goes into the bathroom to clean up after Marion is killed. So like the shot, it looks almost like they put the camera on the bed. Um, the lights in the room were all off, so everything outside of the bathroom was not illuminated, and Norman was silhouetted in the door, like perfectly in the center, and he was mm. kind of turned to the left. You could see him, like, turned looking at something. He had the bucket in his right hand um, held out a little bit to his right. And then the mop was held in a way where, like, um, it was, like, just barely off the floor. He was holding it like an axe, almost. Like like a murder weapon um, in his oh. other hand. And you couldn't – you could only see Marion's legs. Like, that's all you could see. Otherwise, everything else was pure white inside the bat- bathroom. Yeah, that is my favorite I, shot of the film. Just I the way that it's that. framed and, and the contrast from from the the darkness of the room 
to the brightness of the bathroom, the way that it, it it's like juxtapositioned, how how death in a room illuminates it instead of darkens it, and how they flipped that. I don't know. It yeah. it it. Fa- I I love that shot. It's my favorite one in the film, hands down. I mean, I excluding the shower yeah. scene. Yeah, I yeah, also like... like that shot. Um, when he's peeping on her through the hole, that up close like shot of his eye. Oh, that's a good light. one too. The keyhole shot. shot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, like that's that a one. good one. That's a good shot too. Because they get some of the like the dust and smoke too, or steam yeah, probably. Particles. Oh wow! From from the shower. That but that your, is also a shot, good shot. Your shot, Josiah. That one. That's it. Oh my god! I I completely forgot about that one because it's just it's such it's a just quick... a passing shot. Like it, it's like yeah. three seconds long. I actually had to rewind it and like pause. I'll have to go back and look at that. It's that, a really yeah, good shot. It's what um, I like about black and white films, like the contrast between white and black. And yeah. Just having those... The, oh. the contrast was done really well. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I mean, that I guess that's kind of the same thing as my other question. Um, OJ, do you have any other questions? I mean, I think we talked. I mean, I think we talked about everything. Just what we didn't like, what we liked. Okay. Yeah. I'm... Yeah. Now. Yeah. Favorite piece of the soundtrack? Ooh, when Ooh. she's driving and, like, kind of wary of everything around her. Yeah, her the paranoid cop. trip. Yeah. That is a good... That is yeah. a good I like that a lot. Can we it's talk about how, if we didn't know, like, about the Bates Motel, like, if we didn't know about Norman Bates and that story, like, it's been popularized so many times. I mean, it has a TV show, for Christ's sake. So like if we, yeah. if if we didn't know about that, so like imagine you were going into the movie for the first time, and you you sit down and it starts playing, and you know the name of the film is Psycho, and you see this woman who does something crazy, starts running away and is like super paranoid and and like like quick to be suspicious. Could you see how people would think that the Psycho of the film was Marion? I mean. Mm. I could see it going I, that way. Yeah, because you don't, don't you don't see Norman until almost halfway through the movie. Uh, I don't I don't think Psycho, but I think maybe something goes wrong. So maybe she gets such paranoia to where um, maybe she hurts someone, maybe she kills someone because she gets to that level of paranoia. But that level of paranoia, I wouldn't call Psycho. I would call that just. I don't know how to say – I don't want to say over over dramatized because it's not. It's just she has a very – let's say she has a very strong fight-or-flight instinct. Um, so She just stole money. So I she had a good point on that too. She's going to be super, super on edge. So maybe she accidentally kills someone. Maybe she accidentally hurts someone. I would agree with you except in the driving scenes that happen, particularly after she replaces her car – and drives away from the car store snuck into the shots of her like just looking nervous there's one shot with her with a super creepy smile on her face uh, <laughs> oh yeah i know what you're talking when she's like I think that's just stress. the analog of people I, I don't think so i think it i, I think it's on purpose that. Manic i can episode. see that she's and just happy about, about that getting scene away. when she's listening to like the like in her head the yeah, the owner. voices, the uh, voices like, in, her in her head. Yeah, yeah. She starts like smiling because she feels like she got away. Yeah, I mean, it, I could, it just I could creeped say me out. Just that. It was a really yeah. creepy smile, and her eyes were dead, like like soulless. And maybe that's just the black and white, but it could be. I mm-hmm. personally, I I really don't think if it, I mean maybe if even if it was, I'll have to rewatch the scene with the smile. It could just be a manic episode. So much stress yeah, and true. paranoia at the same yeah. time could lead to a manic episode where she's having almost bipolar-like emotions where one <laughs> minute she's happy, the next minute she's super paranoid, distressed, depressed, you know? Well, know I mean, that, that now we have all these classifications for these different things, but in the 60s, they didn't. Like, they they did not have a classification for that. In fact, like... Well, of course. Like PTSD and other mental illnesses were not even medically researched until the the mid to late seventies. 
so so anyone that that strayed from normal socially acceptable behavior would be called a psycho in the 60s right of course i mean okay well with that i i get where you're coming from but i think with that scene i think it relates to just how someone's thought process is just kind of going like he's trying to represent someone's thought process like oh sh- like shit i'm i'm freaking out because i'm running away stealing money and I just got this new car. I'm not sure if it's going to be, if I'm going to get caught or not. But I'm also like, I'm pretty confident that I'll be all right, kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Like it's, that's it's, what that, I know. it's that balance. I, I want, you, that, that does bring up a good point where it, she could go almost crazy for what, what's happening. But I feel like it's just that thought process someone goes through, like in a normal, like, like something crazy like this happening where it's just so chaotic where you had that weird smile kind of pop up here and there. I don't know. That's just my thought. But To me, it felt like she finally had a feeling of relief. Yeah. 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 Like an exhale. Like realize. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a, a facial exhale. Presenting her emotions, yeah. <laughs> As opposed to <laughs> any other form of exhale. As to breathing, uh, breathing super breathing? loud. I don't know. Breathing. Like, like, Breathing's breathing? on your face, know. Lance. <laughs> Where else do you breathe? <laughs> it's you not even... on your face. <laughs> That's have the sigh of relief. I, was gonna say I get what you're saying. You I'm just, yeah, I'm just pushing uh, your buttons. I get what you're saying. I was like, I was so confused. I was like, I was like, oh, I can't tell. I was so confused. That was kind of funny. Though. Um, let me see what else I have. Evan, do you have any any like points or, or discussion topics you want to talk about while I skim what I, I mean, fucking have? Throughout this, I think we've kind of touched on most of the stuff I've had. Um, one thing I did mention in the mo- I, I did mention uh, saw in the movie, um, and kind of looked a little more into. Um, Oh, cross tracking. Have you guys heard of cross tracking with no, the camera? I don't believe Vaguely. so. Actually, so it's yeah, kind of like it. um, this is what I had written here, which is it's an innovation moving the objects in the background forward as the object in the foreground is pulled backward. So I think it was, I think it was the part uh, where the agent gets stabbed. Yeah, is that when he falls down the stairs? Oh, yeah. yeah. The stairs are like moving closer, but he seems like he's not moving at all. And that was in uh, a few other movies. It was in Goodfellas, too, when they were sitting at the diner. It was, yep. They zoomed in, and the background kind of moved, shifted in a bit. But I don't know. I I saw that in that um, shot, and I was like, oh, I've seen this before, like in Goodfellas or whatever. Yeah, and I had to look it up. I was I wasn't sure if you guys have heard of that or not. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Interesting. I was trying to figure out in my head how they did that shot too, because I could tell something was different about it. Yeah, it was just super wonky and like I I enjoyed it because it was just so like out of place. It was fucking goofy, dude. It was a goofy shot. It was a fucking goofy shot. Yeah, Yeah, it makes me laugh too. Uh, one of the things, it was the, this is the first film to show a toilet flushing. Yeah, I was what? about to say that. Yeah. Yeah. It really? Is. It's the earliest one to ever show a toilet. Was that a screen. haze code thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's nuts. That's so it's weird. Because there wasn't anything nasty in it. She just, just ripped up the paper and threw yeah. the toilet. Yeah. Also, haze code uh, is fucking weird, dude. <laughs> it's <is> dumb. <laughs> it's so Imagine stupid. Imagine if that was still a thing today. But oh god, I would, I would. We wouldn't even be would, talking about this right now. We wouldn't watch movies. <laughs> well, if oh, that was yeah. the case, Psycho wouldn't be here. So <laughs> yeah, there was a uh, actually it probably a, would be, but there was a uh, cameo in this movie that you can't tell. Um, oh, but really? Alfred Hitchcock actually is in the movie himself. When she goes into work into her office, he is standing outside with a cowboy hat. It only shows him for six minutes, and you cannot see his. You can kind of see like the side of his face, but it is him. Really? really? What a chat. Yeah. Never well, I'm heard going of back to see that. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. interesting. Speaking if I ever do make a movie, I do want a cameo myself in there. 
I mean, you have to. Just like, just and yeah. Little. M Night the Shyamalan. Grave, it, the grapes are to do. Yeah. Some M Night Shyamalan Tarantino type stuff. Hell yeah. Uh, speaking of fun facts about Psycho, um, here's some tiddly bits about it. Uh, Psycho yeah. earned Oscar nominations for its direction, supporting actress, which was Janet Leigh, by the way. She was not called a a, a, a primary actress, which is probably just because it was the 1960s. But um, cinematography and art direction, or art decoration, my bad, and didn't win any of them. Um, Janet Leigh won the Golden Globe, though, um, off of Psycho, which is pretty pretty poggers. Um, it came in at number 18 on the AFI's 1998 list of the 100 best American films ever made and moved up to number 14 on the 2007 revised list. Uh, the AFI also declared it the number one greatest thriller of all time. And the film mm-hmm. was represented on the AFI's list of greatest movie villains. Norman Bates came in second after Hannibal Lecter. Um, right. And best of musical course. scores, yeah. number four. Uh, it's currently the 23rd really? highest rated film among internet movie database users. Okay. Wow. I thought it would be I didn't lower. think... I would think it would be lower as well. Yeah. But it's a lot not of that categories. popular. Yeah. Well, it's pretty popular. I mean, any, anyone yeah. who's who's a film buff has, has watched Psycho at least a billion yeah. times, right? Any any For movie sure. that's in the top 100 movies of all time is going to be popular. The, yeah. I mean, top 100 but, movies um, of all time. How many films I'm very have been surprised. Made? A lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm very Same surprised way. Anthony Perkins wasn't didn't get anything. Because his he performance was the best out of everyone. It was yeah. amazing. He did phenomenally. <clears throat> I bet that he didn't get anything because he played Norman Bates. Probably. Because Paramount yeah. didn't even want the movie to be made in the first place. Yeah. And yeah. he played a serial killer that, yeah, that maybe back murdered that people on like... screen. Yeah. So... Yeah. Back then, that kind of thing wasn't the thing that you got awards for. Yeah, that might make yeah. him look out to be like a hero. Yeah, or something. They didn't. They yeah. probably didn't want to glorify going against the Hayes Code. I'd that's imagine. yeah. That's another thing on the Hayes Code. Criminals cannot be sympathetic. Yeah, that's that's trash. It, it, are awesome. it, it was sorry. so bad. Criminals are awesome. I love the criminals, man. Criminals can change 100%. I I believe that. Most of my, like, favorite movie characters are, like, absolute psychopaths. Well, one of the, one of the, like, principles of, 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 like, designing a narrative is that your villain has to have plausible and understandable motivations. Like, you can have a villain that is just evil to be evil, but who the fuck cares <laughs> like right. like i like for, for a more modern day example thanos is he, he is undoubtedly he undoubtedly does horrible unforgivable things like he but murders he has half a, a the plausible universe motive for it. he, he yeah. is actually it not only is it plausible he is mathematically correct like yeah yeah the, yeah it, like he is a he is the prime example of having a villain that is easy to hate but also sympathize with and when you do that you 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 ground your story in reality which is another big um principle of, of writing any story um is it has to be plausible because if it's not plausible then nobody cares because they know it couldn't be real that's why people enjoy stories is because they're like you know this could be real that's why when we watch thrillers and horror films the ones that scare us the most are usually the ones that are like that are based on true stories. <laughs> like yeah. yeah. Like that make us shit our pants. Like it's I don't know, it so like that as a code, I feel like really, really probably hindered a lot of storytelling um in in, in, in cinematography before it would before they got rid of it. Uh, it just makes me curious as to like what kind of films we would have seen if that wasn't the, like if the Hayes Code wasn't there. Oh, we would get a so many more, more of these. A lot more. Yeah, what? a lot, a lot better ones. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think there'd be more, like classics. Yeah. A lot more films yeah. that people regarded See, as keystones of cinematography. If you think of that, so would so if we if they did make more things similar to this 
wouldn't it just become almost like a uh, what am I trying to say? Like it'd be uh I don't know almost normal so it's not as like yeah. classic. Like what happened in the seventies and eighties is horror movies like that became dime a dozen yeah. all the time. Like they're almost the same thing, so you're just like, well, they're just okay. They're not classics, you know. They're not. Would, like, yeah. would that would that have happened just, earlier? So so instead of it happening in the seventies, I mean, we're we're into alternate history timelines here now. Like if the Hayes yeah, Code didn't exist, okay. <laughs> would the Avengers films have come out in the early nineties instead of the two thousand tens and on, like kind of okay. shit? But I don't, I mean I don't know about that one just because. Just as an example, like I mean, it could be just like a shit. I mean, they tried comic movies a long time ago, like the classic Spider-Man movie. <laughs> yeah, or or the I don't know Fantastic why we're laughing. Four. That movie's yeah, a lot the first, old Fantastic Four movies. The first Fantastic Four movie. Tell me what Spider-Man. Movies. I mean, Bob. the Batman movies from the '80s with Michael Keaton. Good, good films. Good. good, or even. Good. George Clooney, best Batman gross, ever. Gross, gross. I'm just Get kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, That's Adam a West from, I mean, Adam West portrayed Batman in the 60s. True. That was a good one. Yeah, agreed. R.I.P. That was like the closest thing to comic book realism in like a yeah, show. Every time, he, every time he punched someone, pow! Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, rip, rip him. Like, realism. <laughs> yeah, realism. realism. Yeah. That's I'm what it sounds bad. like when I punch someone. So I don't, I don't know about you. Best representation of a comic book, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the best stylized okay. representation, I think, is what, like yeah. like a a representation yeah. of it in reality. Yeah. I think that uh, that Watchmen did that really really good as well. Oh, great! They Watchmen did, did it great. That's yeah. that's gonna be on my next list of five. So look yes. forward to that. I, I want I want that, that on our list. list. Same here. Um. Speaking of like movies, um, like if the Hayes Code didn't exist, would movies be different? And then we talked briefly about about seventies slasher films and stuff. Um, do you do you guys consider like the entire slasher genre, like including like what I mentioned, Halloween and Friday the Thirteenth? Do you think they're direct results of Psycho's success? Like, do you think if Psycho I, didn't do well, do as well as it did, would they have come out? I still I, do think so. Yes, mm-hmm. but there's a big like, just. How would you say it? They it took moves. a lot from Psycho, a lot. Oh, at, but yeah, like, almost not, exactly the not, same beats. Yeah, but for like all those in the seventies and eighties, they're not giving the killers like personality, especially Jason and Mike Myers. Yeah, it's more. Uh, they're fantasy, just scary. They are evil based. to be evil. Well, yeah. Jason, not really, but Michael Myers is evil to be evil. But neither of them have like a, a like a real realistic face to them to make us like as scared as we would be towards like psycho like it's yeah. not well, like you said josiah about like having that ground of um that, that being grounded realism. In realism yeah 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 to kind of to kind of go off what evan said the the to be see we don't really have a face so we can't like fully be scared of of, of them kind of um I don't think I was scared. I think this movie creeped me out. Like, because it just makes me think Mm -hmm. there are people like this out there. There are people who are this mentally distraught that they would, you know, keep their dead mother's corpse, you know, kind of cross dress as their mother um, because of, you know, childhood trauma um, or other problems in their early childhood life or life in general. Um, I think it just more creeps me out. Yeah, it it, it just more yeah chills yeah, he's me not than anything. Scary. He's just just something he's off unsettling. about him when you watch the movie. That's true. Yeah. Unsettling. Yes. Very unsettling. unsettling. Is, is, is a very good, very good way to put but it. But wouldn't that be considered like a form of being like you're kind of I wouldn't say scared. Is probably not the best word, but you're just on like, alert. Is how I would put yeah. it. On alert. Yeah. yeah. A fight or yeah. flight. Type yeah. Of thing. He he triggers yeah. that like. Should I be ready to fight? Kind of response yeah. from a human being. Right. Yeah. Which I, As I, where, I, where if I w- yeah. Oh, there you go, Evan. You go. You go. Oh, I, I was just gonna say I, br- I I had that in my notes. The fight or flight type of thing, where this movie had that kind of yeah. action in it. Oops. Yeah. I think when it comes to scared, I think the difference between scared and like 
just creeped out, scared is you're ready. You know what you're going to do. Like the, the situation, the situation that makes you scared, you already know if you're going to fight or flight, you already yeah. know because you, you, it's such a like bad instance that you have to make the choice right then, right there. Cre- creeped out is more of like, <clears throat> like Josiah said on Twitter. That's my different, uh, like kind of how to tell the difference between scared and yeah. creeped out. In my mind, I don't know about you guys, but that that's me. I, I agree with that. I don't know. If like I get into any situation that demands me to possibly be ready to fight, bro, my, my instincts are ready. I don't even care. It could, be, a, it could be an infant child. If I look at them and I think <laughs> this thing is a threat to my life, I'm prepped. These okay. cannons are locked and loaded. Right. right. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm saying, like, like scared, oh, shit. you're preparing. <laughs> you, that? you know it's coming, kind of. Shoot. You know it's coming, or you can see it coming. Creeped is more like you're taking minimal steps to prepare. But you're yeah. giving it some leniency because you're unsure. You're like, yeah, but scared. You, you, you don't know. know the unknown. <laughs> right. If right, I can right. fight scared. it, I'm not scared of it. If I can fight <laughs> back <laughs> against it, it doesn't scare me. In this kid's child, gonna get. You could. He's about yeah, to get. You, you could. You could. You could mollywob Norman Bates. You could mollywob. Oh Norman yeah, Bates. dude. I'm like. <laughs> oh, I'm like hands dude. down like at least twice that dude's size. I would fold that kid yeah. like a lawn chair. Hey, hey, Norman got. He got a good hand on. The um, the boyfriend of the main girl. He, he oh, true, he good. did. Yeah, but like that—that that was with like not his pure raw strength. It's just because that. Did you see the hold that guy had his arm in? Like you could very clearly tell yeah. that he was going to grab something. Like just pin his arm, dude. <laughs> true. I think the only Norman... reason that dude lost that fight was to drive the narrative. I think realistically, Norman oh, Bates yeah. would have died that scene. <laughs> what do you mean, Norman's out? <laughs> I don't here think throwing... the man was smart. He didn't have a good. He's out here flight. throwing. Mike Tyson punches. What are you talking about, Josiah? Yeah, dude. It's like getting slapped with a pool noodle. Norman Bates. <laughs> Fucking Mike Tyson. Norman Bates, a black belt in jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> he's in. Yeah, he's in Brazil. He's he about to Joe be Rogan. a black belt and get yeah. his ass beat. Is what he's about Norman, to be. <laughs> Norman Bates God, could yeah. take down Joe Rogan in Brazilian jujitsu. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rogan in Brazilian jujitsu. Oof. Is that a Deadliest Warrior you know? episode, dude? Yes, it oh, is. <laughs> Joe Rogan versus Norman Bates. I Norman miss that Bates show. won the most. They ran the simulation. Oh, Norman Bates would win. <laughs> Norman Hands Bates up. would definitely win. Oh, He'd cross-dress show. and Bring then... Back. Yeah, he does it in his mother's him. outfit. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Speaking his of his outfit. mother's outfit, um, we have shockingly gone this entire podcast without talking about the shower scene. Well, I mean, I mean, it's the classic. There's, like, about it. there's a lot to talk about. about. There's a lot. What do you, classic. Josiah, what do you want to talk about? Well, it's funny you ask Let's that because I have an entire <laughs> snippet in my notes about it. So let me just read it to you. Hell yeah. Do it, do it, do it right now. Hell yeah, mama. So uh, if you were to like compile a list of the most famous scenes in movie history, like, like dude, <laughs> like it's the shower scene. Like, Janet I mean, Lee went on record yeah. saying that she stopped doing films like this because of the shower scene. Like, it scared her so bad to, I mean, to film it's it. It's the most iconic scene in all of films. <laughs> yeah, it has eyes. to be in the top five. It has to be in the top I five. I agree. Um, yeah. There's, like, I don't know if you guys read about this, but there's 80 fragmentary shots in less than a minute in that scene. Well. Really? Um, yeah. Well. And in the 60s, that is a masterpiece of editing. 80 fragmented right. shots in less than a minute in the 60s? That's nuts. They really wanted your heart to pump. To that scene. Like. Um, not to mention, uh, Hitchcock storyboarded that entire scene like down to the most minute detail before they shot it. Really? By hand. I have heard of that, yes. Um, I did not know about that. And and uh, to be honest, like we, we like it's modern day, right? So we're, we're almost, we're definitely over half a century from when that, that movie came out, right? So like, like, okay, this is pretty cheesy. But only because it, it it's old. I think in the 60s, like, if you watch that, you would genuinely believe you were watching a nude woman get hacked to death yeah. with a knife. It's gut-wrenching with the music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and, and there's... Goodness. They also, like, got away with it without showing any naughty bits. I think there's, like, one shot of side boob. I think that's it. Actually, it's, like, super blurry, but that's about it. Yeah, they blurred out a yeah. lot. 
Because like she was like grabbing a shot of her, like yeah, she was like, yeah, like that's trying true. to stop the knife with her hands. Oh yeah, and we only it's, see yeah. like one shot of the knife actually penetrating skin, and there's not even any blood. Yeah, but right. yeah, we yeah, still like believe that this person is being murdered in cold blood. Yeah. Um, and so so the blood dripping down of the drain. So there's right. there's this human. effect called the Kuleshov effect. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. No. Um, I don't know. It's it's a principle of film editing, uh, who's named for the Russian filmmaker who experimented with it in the 1920s. Um, basically, the Kuleshov effect is when um, two or more separate shots are edited together in a sequence, um, and the viewers infer information that is not actually shown in the shot. So it, it's okay. it's not the content of any one shot that matters so much as it is like how it relates to the shots before and after the event. So, like, it's taking two shots and then allowing the audience to fill in what's in between. Like, when you read a book, um, uh, Stephen Lawhead is, like, one of my favorite authors ever. You read his books, the way that he does dialogue, it is almost, like, when characters are talking, almost all it is is their words. He literally leaves their actions, like, what they're doing, how their faces look, and everything entirely up to your brain. Yeah. Which which uh... is crazy. So it's virtually the same thing, just in cinematography. In uh, design, um, they talk about closure, and in my when I watched this from the notes, um, since I watched this in my class, mm-hmm. um, we talked about that and how the shots had that closure of where people kind of had to. It's kind of like a comic book scene with the the gap in the middle. You you kind of have yeah. to like fill in the gap almost. I mean, you literally, and, like, I think each each shot was literally the knife coming up, and then it, like, finishing the downward motion. I don't think you actually saw true. a full shot of him swinging the knife down. No, I don't think you did. Huh. Does that blow your mind? You didn't even notice, did you? No. Because I no, sure because did. Movie a lot, too. Yeah. I never even... I never noticed that either. Wow. Hmm. Um, I didn't even fit it together with this closure thing until now so <laughs> i mean like That's... it's i, I don't like I should have wrote that in my notes a little more i hadn't seen the movie before i watched watched it the other day for this so one I hadn't either. good pick <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah because i yeah. probably wouldn't have watched it <laughs> if not for the podcast um and because like i felt like i knew everything i needed to know about it like i knew about the shower scene i knew about norman bates like i i knew about um like the violin that that like iconic violin like thing like um fuck what movie was it there's a movie that almost directly ripped off the violin like the screeching violins from the shower scene they just inverted the sound to avoid copyright Mm -hmm. what film was it no idea the more modern psycho. <laughs> it, it's 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 a slasher film. Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. The psycho. Vince Vaughn psycho. Vince Vaughn is god, dude. Vince Vaughn is god. <laughs> it's not Halloween because they have their fucking weird xylophone. They thing. have the piano. Yeah. 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 Um. Oh, such a good, such a good theme. Uh, I know. I know. I shows one of the most it. iconic themes of all time. Yeah, I learned how to play it in uh when I had when I was in band in high school, <laughs> and we had an early morning <laughs> band, and the director wasn't there yet, so, uh. Me and my friend played it in the dark as we unlocked the room because <laughs> we were <That's> inside. <laughs> Scared the shit out of him. Um, <laughs> I don't think it was Friday the Thirteenth either. No, I I don't remember. Because that's the that's the that. ch- ch- that's... Ch- <sighs> yeah yeah that's the echo yeah. The weird breathing. The echo is Jason. <laughs> that still sends shivers <laughs> down my spine to this day. By the way, I love that. Really? Yeah. It's that good. movie's never scared me in the slightest. The movie doesn't oh, scare it's me. My... The, it's just that part the of the noise. soundtrack. Mm. Yeah, okay. my favorite slasher, scary. modern slasher. Film. I'm trying to. I, I'm. I'm not going to remember modern. it until after we close the podcast out. It's. It's. It, it's going to be off camera. Yeah, I never heard about any of that. Cool. Interesting. Um, You're gonna have to deal with it. Man. That's really. That's very. I'm gonna have to. Look, <laughs> what did that. you just say to me, <laughs> I didn't what say anything. That? What? Your was that anything. even English? I think he called me yes. a baby. Yes, you know what I did? Baby. I'm speaking cave beast. I'm speaking <laughs> actual non language. This oh. is opposite English. Um, that I hear you, cave. Hayes Code. What cave does it say about skeletons? Skeletons? Um, or like dead bodies? 
Because I was kind of mm. shocked that they showed, like, an actual skeleton. I thought it was just going to be, like, a doll that looked like his mom. Wow, I'm reading a lot more of these. Homosexuality I mean, was not depicted. Holy... It was, I, I mean, it does was that scare you? Like, does that surprise you? Like, what I'm, wow. This, what I'm this was designed like, to get rid of that. To, I don't to know, keep it in plain movies. I don't know if you guys watched the classic Twilight Dude. Zone TV show from the 60s. Yeah, Alfred Hitchcock did a couple of those episodes, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, I would assume that they put in skeletons and stuff like that in those. Just because it's the Twilight Zone. I guess, but didn't, didn't the Twilight Zone come out well after this? Probably like a handful of years. I know it started coming out in the sixties. I don't think there's anything about. I'm not seeing. I don't think there is anything. No, but there's that's nothing interesting. about dead bodies. That's nothing. interesting that there's nothing about dead bodies, but you can't show a woman's feet. Like really? Yeah. You it's... can't show a woman's feet. You it's cannot. Uh, you can't say the word God, Lord, Jesus Christ, hell, or damn unless it was con- like directly connected to yeah. the Christian or Catholic religion. If you're taking it against well, shit. that, we're fucked, boys. <laughs> we've breached. <laughs> we've breached the haze code. God damn. <laughs> God damn it. Um, that that's wild to me, cause like in places yeah. like like China, still like you literally cannot have bones depicted in film or really? any media. That yeah, um, I didn't know that. A, a big, a bi- it was a big issue with um classic World of Warcraft of all things. Um. They had enemies that were like skeletons, and they had right. to change them entirely into zombies for for the Chinese version of the game because really? they they wouldn't wow. allow them to distribute it in China because it showed so bone. Dumb. We <laughs> we literally have this is somewhat off topic, but we literally have a real uh, skeleton at my fine arts building. <laughs> really? To That's draw. Awesome. Do you know, yeah. do you know who's name? like whose it was? Like what the uh, person? Was? It was like a. Uh, an Asian woman, forgot her name. I or mean, she people like donate. Yeah, they they donate yeah. it to science and stuff. Yeah, that'd I forgot cool the name of her. Name it Gladys. Why, dude? I think that's Why? close. Because they need names. <laughs> I think that's close. Died without a name. Damn. Died without a name. <laughs> Rest in it peace. It might be Alice. She was found sure. in Cambodia after the Vietnam War. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Well, on that note, wow. uh, we've breached our hour-long limit for the okay. podcast. Wait, before the end, boys. Uh huh. Yeah, we we Josiah, have to spin and rate. What would you rate it? Oh yeah. Oh, you're right. Let me see. Oh, I'm gonna have to think a little hard on this. Out of, out of ten, huh? Um, probably a seven or an eight. Okay. Lance. Seven. Seven. Okay. Evan. Man. Um I get it. Uh eight point five. Whoa. I would probably give it an eight. Whoa, y'all throwing a solid eight. Here. I was close Dang, I was boys. close to giving it a nine. I almost I really mean, I, I, was, I was thinking yeah. of seven point five, but I, I gotta give it an eight. Evan, just, you're wild and I'm just just for wild. Just for how well it was shot and just the uniqueness of every shot, there, there's a lot of things that I just loved about the movie. I don't know. Yeah. I really connected with it for some reason. I really like horror movies too. So. Same. Okay. Okay. You guys do feel like I'm setting up this bin. So what's that Ooh, like? Now? Yes. Or 7.5? Wait, it's what? pretty solid. I an an average like of seven point five. Average, yeah. Average. That is pretty. Bad. That is pretty solid. We should like throw that on the screen. Yeah, we should. We should throw it. We should yeah. have. Oh yeah, actual just base boosted audio. Yeah, just have me be fucking future me. Have fun editing, you dumb piece of shit. Have fun. <laughs> also, oh, it's too late I'm... now. Long void man. Well, you don't have to do like all of our fucking words. You can just do the. No, I'm not doing all of our words. You literally couldn't pay me enough. <laughs> I know I couldn't. You couldn't pay me enough. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Are we gonna was like, what? roll for the next movie? Yeah, I gotta yeah, get it set up. He's, okay. he's setting it up. Maybe so, if you paid we'll attention. What... Maybe if you paid attention. Hey, I, why I you did. Call him I just forgot. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Get on it. We have some absolute right. bangers on here, by the way, guys. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. True, yeah. Oh, yeah our, future, our future lineup, ladies and gentlemen. Any, any bets be... on what it's going to be, boys? 
dude. Uh, um, Uncut Gems is next. I'm calling it right now. Uncut Gems? Okay. I'm calling it right now. I have a feeling in my loins. Evan, any bets? If I knew the list from um, fucking... Lance, you didn't send me like an actual oh, typed out version of yours, did you? Yes, anyway. yes I did. Yeah, it's in the group chat. chat. I'm going gonna, yes. gonna to bet you The Departed is next. If oh, it really? is, I'll cry. Was I'll that cry. in anybody's choices? Yeah, it was, it was Lance. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a great film. I just chose um, it because it was the last We actually watched it really, like, recently, didn't we? Recently, yeah. yeah. And I will watch it again. I actually I'll watched it again after we watched it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's going to be seven. Oh, I hope. that. Oh. Yeah, that was good. one of mine. Yeah. I, I have I have quite a few easy oh, ones man. in my in my first list. I don't so. want it to be another one of mine, just because that's unfair. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I don't, I don't even I mean, care. I'm the whole, for the whole person's thing, um, yeah, that like they get it and they run it. That didn't really work out, so <laughs> we kind of I mean, just <laughs> all just did whatever we had to do. I mean, I mean it's a good way to start it, it just off. Ask the first question, then. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's that's pretty much what happened. I asked one question and then we just went off for like an hour. Yeah, I think it worked. Yeah, you did. Yeah. That was a great idea, Josiah. <laughs> um. Let me make sure Great I got way everyone's to start thing. I think, we're, I think we're good. All right, we have 18 options, gentlemen. So there's a 1 in the 18 chance. Predictions. Uncut gems. Departed. 7. I think it's going to be Fellowship. That's what we're I think. All off. Oh, I hope. It's spinning. I want all those movies, dude. It's spinning that baby. <laughs> I don't want to watch any of them. Oh, my God. What is it? <laughs> it's 7. <laughs> Yo! Oh, oh, yeah. By a hair. Another it's one. seven by a hair. Who's, whose pick was that? Mine. Oh, no, it was okay. yours. It was your pick. No, I didn't pick seven. Yeah, you did. You said I bet it's going to be seven. You said oh, seven. Oh, no, I thought I, I was asking about, like, list. Put it on the list oh, that's so. mine. Yeah. Yeah. What was it, what, what was it close to? Yeah, what was it? Uh, Shutter Island. Oh. oh I was going to guess that one. Are you. It, it was really oh, by a hair. I thought it was going to be Shutter Island. Bro. Well, well next right. week's... Next, well, not next week, but next podcast thing is, is going to be a fucking banger because that film is a beast of a movie to break down. There is so 100%. much shit in that. It's, it's yeah. going to be a long one. It's going to be a fucking long one, dude. I'm sure um, I missed so many things in the three times I've watched that film. I'm excited to rewatch it. I've seen. Do it we like want to watch that time. one all together and like just break it I'm down? Done. While we're watching it, oh, yeah. Why not? Oh, we're gonna break it down while watching it. Oh, yeah, I'm down fuck for that. it. I, I mean, yeah, I took down. notes We've when I watched Psycho. Time. Oh hell yeah. yeah! So, but um, I'm a visual you, person, so I, I like that more. <laughs> if yeah. if you uh if you don't mind, just I'm gonna add a little a little here. If anyone out there who is watching this has not seen this movie and made it this far has not seen Psycho, uh, watch it. It is uh what what did uh what did we it's on isn't it on something Amazon? Um. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's on. I'm, I'm sure it's on Amazon, Amazon Video, um, either for rent or right. free. Uh, I right, think yeah, it's, it's probably on Hulu. Um, I, as I well. believe it is on Hulu. If it's you on YouTube, it, you can rent it on YouTube. That's yeah. all I know. But or if you're kind of into it illegally, there are many sites. That... <laughs> 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 wait, 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 hold on, 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 uh, allegedly, right by word of mouth, there are certain yeah. places where you could acquire footage of this film without charge. I think it's what I'm Lance is trying to say. This. Yeah, I'm talking about this in a reference to a video game. <clears throat> Not um. Yeah, no, 100. percent Any way that you can I mean, find this film. I watched it like a normal watch. human being and bought the Blu-ray. Yeah, well, you but you know what? Some people. That's like the only normal savvy. thing about you. Yeah. 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 Hey, why don't you calm down? I like some true people. All right. Some people can't hey, get Blu-rays. Blu-rays are amazing. Don't some judge people, the man. Some people don't want to rent the movie. They want to be price savvy. Ain't nothing wrong with price, price savvy. Buy the movie. Okay. Hey, I got it for like there ain't nothing bucks. Wrong Yeah, I was going to say, what is it, like $10 for a 1960s <laughs> Blu-ray? Sometimes they don't want it. Okay, so if I would highly, I, oh, not highly, but I would rent I'm with OJ movie. here. This movie uh, is yeah, the, um, I will like definitely be putting a spoiler thing in front of it in case anyone wants to go watch it beforehand but yes. um if you if you made it all the way through um and you haven't seen it i would still watch it even knowing 
the stuff that we talked about today. In fact, I think it would enhance your viewing experience to know like some of the topics we talked about today, like the Kalachov yeah. effect and all yeah. that. Like you'll see it. Um, and yeah, stuff and, and how it connects to other dimension. films you've seen. It really will probably enhance your viewing experience. So I would recommend that. Yes. Um, any other closing comments, gentlemen? Uh, not for me. No, just stay safe, everyone, dude. That's, I'm peachy. Everyone have a good yeah. time watching it. Yeah, of course, of course. Awesome. And I'm excited for seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm so excited that. for that episode. I'm excited for the seven episode. It's gonna be fun. Let's let's go. All right. Well, that concludes the uh the first episode of Film Faction, everyone. Um, we will see you guys next episode. Adios. Stay classy, everyone. Yes.